Hey, what's going on, fellas? Got another video for Jonas today. We're going to be metering the fuel consumption of a Cyclone wood pellet burner. Now, this is just a test setup to validate the size of the combustion chamber. This is not the device we're going to be using. We just want to see how much energy we can produce with this size because I sent Jonas a diagram that depicted a device that has a top discharge. And we are going to eventually turn the test device into a top discharge unit, but not this test. We have a three-stage compressor here or a blower or a vacuum, whatever you want to call it. I purchased this label as a vacuum blower. Um, this is a very high power unit. The reason why I chose three stages is because it'll allow us to pump more air with lower RPM. It's a higher efficiency pump basically. And um, we're gonna check out the fuel consumption of this thing today, which came out to approximately 136 kilowatts. It's five kilowatts per kilogram of wood pellets. The type of wood pellets I'm using are made out of sawdust and vegetable oil, apparently. I did not know that. So that's what we have. This is about the size of the, I believe these are just made out of sawdust. Let's check this out. Here we go. If your name isn't Jonas, you're going to want to skip over the next 170 seconds of this video. So here's the figures. I do everything in seconds when I'm metering flow rate. So in 170 seconds, we consumed 1.27 kilograms. So if we divide that by 3,600 seconds in an hour, we come up with 26.89 kilograms an hour fuel consumed. On average, you get five kilowatts per kilogram of fuel out of, or energy, out of a wood pellet. So five times 26.89 kilograms an hour gives us 134 kilowatts, which is about 80 horsepower. And we're pressing temperatures above 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, around the five to 600 Celsius range. So we, can, we definitely have room to work with here. This is good. I calculated with empirical data based on machines I've already built that we would only need about 64 kilowatts. <clears throat> so this gives us plenty of room that we may need in the event that I'm actually overfeeding this thing. Now, I did several tests just like the one you see, but I'm not gonna bore everybody to death with all that, and came up with approximately the same figure every time. One time I got as high as 136 kilowatts. At no point did it appear that I was overfeeding this device. In fact, I found myself in the need to catch up several times. However, my concern was with the overfeeding is that the charcoal has a higher residence time than the actual wood burn portion of the deal. The little char charcoal pellets tend to hang around for quite a long time, so a scenario could unfold where it would appear you're not overfeeding it, but then you just end up with all this charcoal that just won't burn fast enough. So because we are so far above the 64 kilowatt target, that gives us plenty of room and by no means will we be overfilling the thing at that rate. As far as the airflow goes, the airflow was set at the optimum effective rate, meaning that if you turn it up any higher than this, it starts to blow embers out of the discharge and we don't want that. So. We wanted to run this thing as high as we could get it and we're not doing any parasitic power loss testing in this video because the pump or the compressor is not properly connected to the system it's just they're serving as a blower right now so we're just about done with the test here as i said i have several clips of this very same event going on and things seem to be just fine so here it is we're coming up on the two minutes and 50 seconds so we are burning at blue flame rates. It's very hard to see on camera, but the naked eye picks it up very well. 
This is incredible output, guys. One thousand four hundred some degrees. One thing I need to point out about that thermometer is when the decimal point disappears, that means you're at a thousand degrees. The little small number on the right, that becomes part of the significant figure. See that right there? We're at 1,000 some degrees on the intake portion, which is beautiful. That thing will be red hot when we put the discharge up top, and it'll run even better. Now, once we got it to this state, we would add fuel at a steady rate, and it will maintain this combustion. Got a nice little blue flame with that fire there. You know, that might actually be from the vegetable oil. <laughs> Hard to say. I'm gonna blast it out of there. We got stuff to do. Basically, this charcoal will burn for an hour if I just let it sit here, and I don't want to get carbon monoxide poisoning, so we're just turning the blower on high to blast it out. See what I mean? Looks like it got a little hot in there. Not too shabby. All right, fellas, so that's a wrap. In the next test, we're gonna do the top discharge. Did you notice how red hot the side was getting and the discharge tube itself? We're going to put that on top and that's going to give that preheat zone or the air intake zone a heck of a lot more preheat and the performance of this thing is going to be even better. So at lower operating rates too, that's the important part. When you turn down the machine, we still need some pretty effective operating characteristics because these cold steam coils that the boiler is going to be made out of is going to cause a lot of soot buildup, and we've got to be able to burn that off. So we got to do this right. I may also be doing an auger feeder. I don't know yet. Auger feeders are kind of hard to do, especially when it comes to wood pellets, because if you get a jam, you've got to have electronics that can handle that, a reversing circuit. I have a reversing circuit somewhere, but I don't know where I put it. It came out of an old paper shredder. That's the perfect piece of electronics for that, by the way. If you ever go to build um, your own little chip feeder, see if you can find an old paper shredder in the trash somewhere, and there's an electronic circuit in there that when it senses a uh, high load, it reverses the direction for a couple of seconds and then resumes. Pretty awesome little piece of electronics.